What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at this week's forecast, seeing what the stars have in store for us, as well as taking a look at the recent retrograde, uh, Mars retrograde that has just ended, in, as well as the Mercury retrograde going on, about to end. Um, I'll drop some astrological observations and all of that. So, let's get into it. As always, shout out to all the Capricorn celebrating birthdays this week. Pay close attention to this energy as it'll be with you all year long. <clears throat> so, we are at a very interesting place. We're coming off of a, a full moon. The full moon is past. Uh, we're heading to, we're in the waning phase. These retrogrades are now starting to shift. And I I will say this, that, um, you know, Mars was in Gemini for all that time. And eventually, just like anything, you'll start to get a particular footing with it. You know, to start to figure out how it works for you and all of that. <clears throat> One thing I've definitely been big on and telling people, be, be like, simply be more patient. During a Mars retrograde, be more patient. And then Mars also ruling over vehicles, right? What no better place to be patient than in the car. And I find, you know, the real the real difference within the, knowing the stuff and not knowing it is being able to have conscious control over those little moments where you consciously say, "Huh, I can escalate, but I actually know that this is not worth it. This is not going to lead anywhere." Or this is the energy <clears throat> playing out and I would just be a willing participant in it, right? And, you know, as I've told, I've told my students this before, listen, I am, I'm a human. I'm a human and I have free will. And at certain times, you're just going to have to participate and be like, well, all right, I was pretty impulsive there. Or, you know, I, I said some shit I shouldn't have said. Fuck it. You know, that's, that's life. That's life. That's flow being in flow <clears throat> so i feel as though naturally you get to this this state of flow with this energy and then on the 29th right before the new year mercury goes retrograde and because it's influencing and ruling over mars in gemini <clears throat> i felt like that dialed up or turned up the energy um, even more. Then there were environmental factors going on. Uh, it was brought to my attention that something in regards to solar flares, as well as something something else, like uh, reminiscent to like little little puddles forming, you know, in in certain parts of the sky. Everything is as above, so below. So we're in the the body of the universe. These things can be like let's let's call them pimples, right? Like like pimples. The equivalent of having a pimple or scab that's long, comfortable, and that brings irritation. It's it's a process that has to pass, but the, you know the energetic equivalent is is kind of like being more aggy, um, having the temperature turned up a little bit, and and just not being comfortable. So for me, as a somebody with the Earth Moon, Earth Rising, it's always important to have a layer of groundedness or or a baseline to to get back to it, right? Practical ways of doing so and all that. And there are just particular times where, so I feel like I I made it easier to to be able to connect back to this thing. But there are particular particular times where you just have to acknowledge, like, no, as they would say rest there's no you don't need to connect back to this right now it, you will in time do nothing just just be you know um so i want i want you to keep that in mind uh so there's astrology it's, it's, everything is energy you know and earth uh and the universe is a whole organism so it's, it's a lot going on that will always help uh affect how you know things feel or manifest here right so then that retrograde feel has been has been turned up. And I'm gonna cut to the, the chase here. One of the things I want to address here is you know, during retrogrades, 
<clears throat> you'll be able to notice different different things if you're approaching it with the correct inner awareness, okay? And overall, just taking note of things. So I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know you Capricorn, Capricorn rules Saturn or is ruled by Saturn. Saturn, the Lord of Karma. There is, and if you read my book, Astrology of the Matrix, you have a better understanding of all the different facets, you know, of karma. But within karma, at uh, this aspect of karma and Capricorn and all of that, Capricorn pertains to things like obligations, accountability, responsibility, professionalism, uh, and all of those things really are integral parts of being a functioning and respected member of society. When it, if you're going to take a job, even if you're working for yourself, you have to have a layer of professionalism and accountability. If you're going out seeking services in the world for, for anything in life, at the doctor's office, dentist, whatever, Capricorn and that, <clears throat> that light law here of Saturn and and Capricorn is like, yo, give, give the energy you want to receive. In a sense, I, and I'm I'm big on not making it all about that, but to a degree, it's a, a, a an important measure. It's an important measure. So I say that to say this, y'all. I I know I have good karma in life, and I and it just is. It is what it is. And because I know myself and I've explored myself, I, I see why. It's like, okay, I paid attention or I cared about this particular aspect, and then this is the the payoff, right? And then as a result, life gives you these results or rewards or mirrors back to you in whatever way. So then within your life, at different periods, depending on personal transits you'll undergo, like I said, at retrogrades and time like that, you'll be able to get a a karmic feedback on particular things you've invested in, um, ways of being, all of that. And I honestly could say I've had a lot of jobs in my life, and I'm I love it. I've had you know uh, experience doing a lot of things, and when. When I was doing those things, I went about it with a good nature and energy, and I was kind to people. And let's say, a, you know, when I worked in a, like a fast food establishment, I was very generous just in terms of what I was giving or accommodating customers. And I'm telling y'all, I literally am always walking into the benefits of... <clears throat> Or the return on those deeds. Seriously. Like it's, it's such a cool thing. Like I walk places. Hey, you want this? I get free things. I just get that kindness returned to me. So therefore from a conscious view, I just store that within understanding. Like, oh wow, okay. Like I remember when I helped out such and such or I went about things this way. You know, maybe it's a comeback for that. You're just moving in accordance, right? So what I'm building to with this is throughout different transits, anyone can be able to see these things, these uh, karmic feedbacks. And then under a retrograde like Capricorn, Mercury and Capricorn, this very much so gets elevated. And for myself particularly, it's just played out in an interesting uh, way in which, you know, I'll share, I'll share with y'all. So one of the things that I've, I've, within me doing readings and all of that, one of the things I've learned is that, okay, there are going to be some people who get the reading and are extremely appreciative. And more times than not, that is the energy because it's, it's just an, it's an appreciative experience. You're getting to know yourself from a particular perspective. You're, you're, you know, this is a, a life pit stop in which you're like gathering a perspective to help you go on. So that should always be the energy attached to it. Then, but then this is the reality of life and the zodiac and 
uh, different perspectives and just how di people are different. There are people <laughs> who receive their reading and they do not say thank you. They do not let you know how it was. And, you know, I've had to learn that it is what it is. I would never approach it like that. And like I said, my karma in life is what it is because of particular things that I've done in my consciousness of that, right? So this retrograde, you know, Capricorn, I'm a 10th house sun, you know, Mars in retrograde, all of that. It just so happened that a lot of people who received readings from me in the past that never elected to say thank you or, or you know, people that just ghosted have resurfaced. Now, I'm going to let y'all know. There are some people who are going to be like, oh, I love being petty or all of that. I, I'm not here for all of that. But, and my intent is simply not that. I just, at this point in time, I've learned on some Capricorn shit, no one's obligated to respond. It is what it is. You pay me for a service. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want any feedback or you, you don't want to build on it further, that, that's on you, Right. So then at the, at the same time, just like I always tell people, every person that contacts me for a reading, I I, don't, I may not give them a reading because they may not know why they want a reading or things of that nature, right? Or the energy just may not be right. So simply put, you know, I'm a very communicative person. I feel like communication should never be uh, a difficult thing with uh someone who's that's their strengths right and then in my business i i pride myself on being good in that area so you know simply put no no pettiness or just simply energy if i don't respond to you it's just my my spirit doesn't resonate with how how that went um and then secondly i, I say this in terms of professionalism being an adult and all of that here's a kicker about what I do as as a YouTuber, as a YouTuber, I, I, I can be any type of content creator, but I haven't be a content creator that, you know, puts my, my face out there or myself. Um, and that's letting you know a, a part about me and, you know, just how I get down. The internet, if the way it goes, you know, there's this 12 house aspect to it. Anybody could be what they want to be or someone could be something that they're not actually, right? So, simply put, like, there are just particular ways, like, if you're going to reach out, try to build, try to get a service or something, at very least, you you should respond with your name. And when you've been doing what I'm doing long enough, you, you observe and you see that, like, okay, people who start their emails, like, hi, I'm such and such, the energy and the interaction flows a particular way. And those who come off ambiguous, there's normally just something weird about that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They'll, their name won't be their email or you, it'll be something very ambiguous. And then on top of that, and nowhere in the email you put, I'm such and such. It's just weird. And astrology and the way I approach astrology, heart-centered wise, and how I do my shit is like, bro, I'm an in Anybody could call themselves anything. We all have divine aspects of ourselves, right? But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm me. I'm a, I'm a person. I'm a person and, and with my own value systems and my own things. So, you know, just just be mindful, you know, of, of all of that. And then, like I said, I, with Capricorn, continue with Capricorn. The world is organized. Things don't have to be, don't have to be difficult. You know what I'm saying? I have a website. A lot of times, you know, informational stuff will be right there, you know? So um, I would just say the world is to this point where we always want to be respectful of people's time, energy, um, and just, yeah, have your energy correct, man. Have your energy correct. And, and, and the last thing I'll just say is that I'm not everybody, and, and I love me. You know, I love being me or whatever, um, but I'm, I'm very open-minded and, and all of that, so... You know, I hope all of that made sense, you know, so karmically, that's like just one aspect. And those are those the little things that if you can be mindful of that, those are the little 
ways you can sway the scales your way in life Sim simply and just sim and then that allows you to lead with you know a, a good attitude and you know next thing this may just be me because i'm a moon in the first if i'm ever not in the mood right and i think a place where i will go if i'm not necessarily in the mood would be the gym to blow off some steam and shit but just the way my shit it my energy is you're, I'm gonna have an interaction that's like you can't cut off the world, and, and someone's gonna be able to brighten up your day, and which just leads to a greater appre appreciation for people. But at the same time, I have the choice where I could lead. I could lead with the attitude like I'm feeling like an asshole today, so I'm gonna make you get a gist of that energy, and then you know what I'm saying. Um, so that's the power of choice and, and all of that. Right. So we're all the way in. And for those of you that, like I said, those of you who like when I talk and give you my mind and then other you, y'all just want the astrology. Um, well, here here we go. This retrograde was meant to, through Aries and Scorpio, help rewire our psychological psychological conditioning uh, um, towards our desires and our self projection. Right. So. Mars and Gemini really should have helped us take those areas a little bit more serious. And I really feel like has actually given time, so much time with, with the Taurus energy too, to really get a understanding about how to generate a new paradigm off of new skills and uh, things that you value, right? So that equates towards the Capricorn influence. What are you letting go mentally? What is in your way? What is uh, a distraction? So I started off talking about Capricorn in that way in terms of obligation accountability because it deals with reality and the reality of what needs to be done in order to reach the mountaintop, as they would say, the ladder of success. So it's this attitude about growing up and being mature, but that starts with your thoughts and how you think about things, you know? I'm always being, you know, authentic and vulnerable with y'all. I, by virtue of how my soul is set up, it, I am naturally not competitive in regards to a lot of things, but I'm passionate. I'm passionate, but I'm not competitive. So something to develop is a sense of competitiveness, right? And being someone spiritually inclined, it's like, all right, man, like it's, it's kind of like the idea of like, you know, just just because you're spiritual or righteous don't mean you need to be broke or you need to not be concerned with making money. Nah, you feel me? Once the, our, the whole zodiac, we want to be able to embody and learn all these aspects. So remember that the planets that you have in particular signs and positions just show where energy predominates and, you know, is needing more attention or, you know what I'm saying, lessons are being learned. But overall, we want to encompass the totality of the whole 360 degrees, right? So that's having a good business sense. That's um being competitive enough to get to the mountaintop. Hence, Mars exalted in Capricorn, all right? So another thing that I think can be great to do at this time with Mars changing direction us getting a, a new burst of energy. And as I've been saying, focus on getting into our bodies, uh, paying attention to our body consciousness. Uh, I think things like fasting right now or just alterations towards your diet. Of course, you know, it's the new year. I'm sure everybody has their, their resolutions and things. And I'm definitely seeing it. I'm seeing it, you know, uh, amongst people in my lives. Everybody's not loud about it. Everyone's making their changes subtly. And, you know, some, some, a lot of times that's really the best way uh, to proceed. Um, so I feel like we want to be, be conscious of, of our diet. Um, I've also been seeing, 
you know, just things I've seen people posted, things about, you know, natural dopamine. I've been seeing uh, the brother Andrew Huberman. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he does, but he's always telling everyone about it, about their brains and stuff. Um, that kind of energy. So then the next thing, the next thing here we got important this week. We got Sun starting off the week sextiling Neptune, which simply put all the Capricorns I've ex um, had exchanges with ha recognize the writing on the wall, and that is surrender. Okay, literally, there is a need for all of us, in, in some degree, uh, to let go of an aspect that I I'm just bring to you is just. It may be too st status quo, so it's preventing you from liberating further, right? Or it can be, if you let's say you're Aquarius dominant, your 11th house, not being status quo enough, okay? So what let go of, simply put what I've seen in, in Australia sometimes, people with Neptune... Neptune and harsh aspects, particularly to like the sun, it's hard to grow up. It's hard to feel like I'm going to do all of this alone and it's not hard or overwhelming, right? So here, there's a need to be real with yourself about something, whether this, whether you're being too right as a spiritual person, always want to check yourself for not being too righteous. This is something I do to, you know, keep myself in line and just admit like all right okay like like this can be a fault right so knowing what to let go of in order to get closer towards that particular uh tr transcendent experience or thing right then you got sun getting closer to pluto going to form a conjunction and this is a pure power play y'all this is this is about focusing this week like really showing yourself your endurance. So we look at Capricorn as like the mountaintop, right? And, and climbing the mountain. This is the week with this Pluto influence and this Neptune, you should be in the zone. And what I was alluding to before was was like with the dopamine and things of that nature, um, really getting a feeling of that. So try try to get high off life, guys. Try to get high off life and be presently obsessed with the pursuit of whatever it is um, that you're pursuing right now, okay? Um, and then allow yourself to build off that energy and innovate, you know, with the Aquarian influences and all of that, all right? So, we're going to have a good week. We're going to have a good week. That's really what we got to do, y'all. Focus, be mindful of you know how to grow up, how to assume our responsibilities out here. I got I got more talks coming on on just like the energy and how I see it, and you know how I feel like we can really you know relate towards it. All right. So my interpretation of this week's forecast. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so now. Join the Patreon. Uh, got my book, Strategy of the Matrix. If you need a reading, holla at me, GeminiBrown.com. Till next time, peace.